to the Malmark Company in Pennsylvania, where they came from originally 43 years ago, 40 years ago. And we had them all completely refurbished. They took every bell apart, cleaned everything, put in new parts, replaced whatever had to be done, and then sent them back to us. Um, this was all paid for by the Memorial Committee, and so we're really very happy to have bells that are all in working order, all with real bell parts that got replaced because we were getting to the point where we didn't have real parts to replace with. And everything got all shined up and it looks, they look wonderful and they play beautifully. So thank you to the Memorial Committee and to this church for doing that for us.
it's absolutely nice to have them back. Uh, my name is Tony Shoemaker. I have the privilege of being the pastor here at Middleville and at Parmalee United Methodist Church. Uh, today we finish up our series, Moving Out of Scare City. So I'd like to invite Diane to come up and plant some seeds for us this morning. <coughs> joy. <laughs> the bells are beautiful, but the gift these women have shared with us this morning is also beautiful, and I'm enormously grateful for their dedication and their willingness, their generosity to share their time and their talents with us. So, mm. thank you very much. <laughs> and now, to plant some seeds. Today, we take our fourth and final step out of Scare City by starting with a question. The opposite of scarcity is abundance. So here is our question for today. Where in the world can you find God's abundance? We will be hearing some answers to this question during the service. Chances are, if this series has made a difference in your life, then you are already noticing God's blessings of abundance and focusing less on the world's constant invitation to always be afraid of something or someone. When you focus on God's abundance, you will begin to discover the peace which passes all understanding in Christ Jesus. Join us today as we leave Scare City for the embrace of a God who provides mercy grace, and forgiveness each day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us to your side. Call us away from those things in this world that draw us away from you. So Lord, in this day, through the music, through the bells, through the spoken words, through the words of liturgy, may we, may we hear you speaking to our very soul in this service today. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please stand as you're able. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies, if you try to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life.
today out of fear for tomorrow or hope for tomorrow? <laughs> so you must be contemplating a move away from scarce city. Contemplating, yes, but the shadow of fear keeps lurking around us. You have come a long way since in the last don't you know fear won't leave you until you let it go? Stepping into God's abundance does sound nice. I guess I can let go of my fears, at least during worship here today. Awesome. That's a start. I pray the reality of God's abundance will illuminate your spirit here today. Yes. We have seen God's abundance in the world from time to time. May the Holy Spirit, Jesus promised, open our eyes that we may move from the scarcity the world offers into the abundance of grace, mercy, and love of God.
Okay, uh, just going to give you the rundown on the count of three. We're going to do some things. Um, we're going to have you stand up, look at the camera, and wave at the people who are home online watching us today and through the week. And then after that, stay where you are, but reach out and shake somebody's hand. That's a public service announcement. Because if you get in the aisle, the kids are going to run you over. Um, they come up for a rhythm section at that time, too. So on three. One, two, three. Let's roll.
talking to a second grade boy at daycare. And he was kind of sad one day. And he said, well, I have a friend that won't be my friend anymore. And I said, oh, that's kind of sad. He goes, I don't understand because she was my friend all summer and he was swimming at my pool. But then when I came to school, she said, I'm too old for you and I'm not going to be your friend anymore. That is not very nice, is it? Do you think that maybe she was a friend because she could use a pool? I don't know. Yeah, she could use a friend too. So God teaches us to trust in him and that's the lesson we learn. The last L is love. Now the sample they gave was Clifford the big red dog. Has anybody ever read that? Yeah, probably not. I read that. My teacher read that. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the main character in there besides Clifford? Who was his owner? You know, remember? Uh, Emily Elizabeth. You remembered? Oh, good. So Emily Elizabeth, what did she do with her dog? Did she love him or not love him? She did love him. And the more she loved him, what happened to Clifford? Got bigger. He got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, if you had a dog that you loved so much and he got as big as Clifford, who do you think would let your parents, would your parents let you keep Clifford if he got that big? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would eat a lot of dog food, I think. So do you think that God loves us? that much. He does. And the more we love him, the more we love other people, the more bigger his love becomes for us, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, let's fold our hands. And bow our heads. Does anybody want to do the prayer? Yeah. Landon? Okay.
Lord, we give today, not out of fear of your retribution, but out of thankfulness for the abundance you have surrounded us with. May the peace we experience, knowing that you are always with us, be the beginning of a new peace on earth, as it is in heaven. Use our eyes and offerings today as a catalyst by which others may move from scarcity and fear into an abundant relationship with Jesus the Christ. Lord, use us as a congregation and as individuals to be living examples of your grace, mercy, and love. Amen. Maybe may seated. On our board this morning, we have a happy birthday. It must be from Drummer Dan to my sweet wife, Sue Reedman. Also, uh, I received a text this morning from her, and, and it's also written on the board here today that Roz Snyder is in the hospital um, again. And Helen Morris Smith is recovering from shoulder surgery. If you have other prayers you'd like to share, please fill out that little tear-off on your bulletin and, and share the prayer that you would like. Let us come before the Lord in silent prayer.
And in Jerusalem, Peter agreed that God's love goes beyond the Jewish nation into all people. Today, we hear again from Paul. He is now well-seasoned and old. He writes to Timothy, and Timothy is really his protege. He was training up Timothy that when he could no longer do the work of the ministry of the Lord, that Timothy would be able to carry on with that. And um, he gave him insights and coaching. And our script, our scripture today comes from the end of this first letter. He's, he wrote two letters to Timothy. But this one comes from the first one. Earlier on in this reading, he had coached him on money matters and talked about the love of money. Um, you know, it, money's not a bad thing. It's when you love money that it becomes a bad thing, when that becomes what directs your life, when that becomes what you're chasing after. Um, so now, uh, Paul knows that Timothy will encounter people that are living in scarcity, and, and they'll be afraid of things in this world because of their love of money and possessions. I could lose all my money in the stock market crash. There's a fear. So I'm going to invite Diane to come up and uh, share with us First Timothy 6, 17 through 19 this morning. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Last sentence is interesting. Take hold of life that is truly life. So what is life to you? Is it maybe one of those children downstairs? Maybe the family with children over there in the playground? Is it the people sitting around you? Is it somebody in a hospital right now? Or is it your bank account? Your stocks, your bonds? What is life to you? We have to move out of scarcity to find life. It can only be found when we let go those things that bind us. So how does this challenge us today, number two, in our message notes? We are called to transform the places within and around us with the evidence of God's love and grace. There's that word. You haven't heard it in a while, have you? What's the word? Transformation means change. <laughs> For those of you that don't know what's going on, we learned when I first came, you can't say change out loud in the church or you get in trouble. <laughs> we are called to transform the places within us and around us with the evidence of God's love and grace. We are challenged to offer radical generosity to transform the places where we are. The food pantry, trunk or treat, having a meal for the community once a month are good places to start. One thing we can do is to offer defiant praise. What in the heck is defiant praise? It's a praise that defies what the world is telling you. It's a praise that defies what cable news is telling you. It's a praise that I want to invite five different voices to come up and read for us. Mana.
Oh, get, you're going to use that speaker. Use the podium. Yep, sorry. Yeah, it's going to start out well. Yes. So, Defiant Praise by John Van de Lahar. Defiant Praise. There are many doorways to cynicism, Jesus. Many reasons for despair. Many causes for fear. But there is no excuse for giving them ultimate power, not if we really believe what we claim to believe. Resurrection is real. Jesus, we have touched it and seen it. Our own lives bear witness to it, and it constantly reveals itself in our world. And so, in spite of the fear that nags at us, and in the face of the despair and cynicism that taunts us in denial of all that would seek to steal life away, we offer you our love, our devotion, our lives as an offering of resurrection, faith, and defiant praise. One, two.
Do not be anxious about anything. <laughs> with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus. Don't be anxious about anything. <laughs> but by everything in prayer, thanksgiving, bring your request, and the peace of God that passes understanding of character hearts and minds. I want to invite the residents of Scarce City to move into abundance today. What if? What if we lived out our faith in defiant praise? What if we actually turned off cable news, didn't listen to it anymore? What if we made sure we did a devotion every day or spent some time listening to some Christian style music or whatever you like, rather than stuff that just scares the bejiggers out of us and causes us to be in scarcity and live in scarcity? We talked about it a few weeks ago, how many of us still have toilet paper left over? <laughs> you know, that's scarcity. Sometimes. Sometimes it's a lot more real than that. What if we stop clinging to our fears and let them go? What if we let go of our not enoughness that we've been struggling with? Worrying about if we have too, enough money or enough stuff. What if we let go of our fear factor? That thing that frightens us about tomorrow. What if we let go of worrying about those people? What else do we need to let go of? Answers. Raise your hand. What do you need to let go of? Doubt? Anxiety. Anger? Anxiety? Greed. 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 Pride. Pride? I hope you guys have heard this series as well as I have. It's practice what you preach, you know, thing. <laughs> I have really realized in this one I need to let go of my fear of the future. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 I mean, I am 64, and, um, <laughs> and as you mature in life, the end starts getting closer <laughs> than your birth. <laughs> and um, we sometimes are afraid of that. Not afraid of what will happen. In, in Christ, we know that when we transition from this life to the next, we will we leave this earthly body behind and our spirit will join with Christ. But it's that process between now and then. And uh, letting God, let go and let God is one of those things for all of us, especially for me today. So what if we didn't build altars everywhere, but instead pointed out God to people daily. I see God over there. You see that? See that sunrise? I see God in that. Or that beautiful child of yours, I see God's presence in that child. Do you see that? What if we own Paul's words to the Corinthians from his second letter, chapter 9, verse 8? Hear these words. And God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, hear that again, all things, all times, having you, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being so present to us. And Lord, we admit, we don't always notice. We, we sometimes are busy worrying about tomorrow or the next hour or, or where we got to be next. And we're, we're running so fast that we might get caught by the, by the po-po. But Lord, when we lean into you, we slow down. We see you around us everywhere. So Lord, may we truly leave scarce city where everything is scarce. And may we live into abundance especially in the abundance of your presence in our lives. 
your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. We ask all this in the name of Jesus the Christ.
of some things, but Madeline's the main person who's going to be our new youth leader. Here. I am excited too. So, uh, but I told her I, I wanted to do just a very brief interview today with a couple of questions, just so you can hear, because we were so impressed when she came in for an interview with us about her heart for this. So, so Madeline, first, what excites you about this? do this with all these kids. Um, one of them is my sister, and like it's just going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about it to see these kids grow up, um, and just to get help them in Christ, and just in general. It's really awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, what would you like to bring from your youth group experience that you had? Um, well, when I was in youth group for a long time, I was like the baby of youth group. I was like the only one in fifth grade, and the only one in my grade. Um, and so I got to see all of these older kids, um, like, go and experience, like, high school and all of these things that were really kind of scary to me. And when they did it, you know, I saw it and I was like, oh, it's not so bad. If they can do it, I can do it. Um, so that was really powerful to me. And I want to create an environment for these kids that is, like, kind of like that. Or, you know, these older kids that are finishing out high school um, or going into high school and they get to see that, like, oh, it's, it's not so bad. These kids can do it. And I can see them at school. So I can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's happening, she's going to have a meeting with the parents coming up on October 1st after church. And, and we want to make sure all the parents have an opportunity to give input and have an opportunity to be involved. One of the changes that she requested, and this is, speaks to her sensitivity, is we have always had youth group with fifth grade through seniors. And she has, she's also taking on our MUD group too, which is um, now going to be fifth grade through eighth grade, or through senior high at the church here on Sundays a couple times a month. So we're going to have fifth graders involved in both MUD and youth. So I just thank her for that, uh, for bringing that to our attention. And Lord, just give her a, wait a minute, wait a minute. we got to pray a little bit. Just point your hands up here if you would. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for Angie and Madeline that as, as they move forward uh, in this new phase of our youth group, Lord, that they may sense your presence and they may always, as we know they will, just love on those children and those youth as you love on each of them. So Lord, as a congregation, we commit to them to be supportive and be there with them and for them in many generous ways. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Okay. Okay. Shoes up. Crop walk. trustees want us to know that um, uh, the carpets downstairs are going to be clean next week and the downstairs will not be available from the 20th to the 23rd. And the secondary note I got today is on Wednesday from at 4 o'clock, if you could come and help out, um, they've got to move all the tables out of the fellowship hall so that can be done. So. Mine says 4 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Okay, then change to 9 o'clock. <laughs> you can be there. Let's get her done. Let's get her done. Get her done. Yeah, you All right, let's finish with the song and get her done. Please stand. Thank you. 